Hey, this is Matt with Gun Addicts. I'm here at Black Sheep Arms. We've got some cool stuff in front of us. And um, for those of you that don't know, Black Sheep Arms is located in Austin, Texas, uh, my hometown. And I recently found you guys because, I mean, this this shop has only been here since December of this year, or past year, we just hit the New Year's. But uh, I mean, you guys just recently had your your grand opening, correct? That's correct, December 20th. Okay. Yeah, big day, we like rushed for two months to get to that one day. Yeah. But so yeah, and it went well. Um, I've, I've been banned from ordering food. I can't order food anymore because I, I didn't want to run out of food, so I ordered more food than probably you would ever need. Um, and uh, we ended up giving a bunch of it to the Salvation Army, so that was... Cool. Yeah, that was the highlight. Now you guys have been around for a couple of years, as I said already. Um, but you kind of consolidated into one shop where you can do a lot of the services that you do. And, and you kind of have a couple functions here at Black Sheep Arms. And uh, one of the big things, besides gun sales, which we've got some awesome, awesome products behind us. I mean, you walk into a, a really good variety of AR-15s. And also, you also do some custom stuff and custom builds. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well. What we wanted to do is find a niche and do something that we liked doing and we didn't want to be just another gun store. So we decided we like building things, we like AR-15s, um, so sort of natural progression. Um, came up with the Black Sheep brand and we, so we have our Black Sheep AR-15, it's called the Lucky 7. Um, and we've been, since we started, we've, you know, originally, and, and, and we don't have a preference. We'll sell gun parts, we'll build guns. Um, you know, whatever someone wants, we're sort of amenable to. But a lot of people come in and they say, hey, we want you to do a custom build. This is actually a custom build that we're doing for somebody that's going to be an AR pistol build. Okay. So, you know, you have your pistol tube, this will have a six hour brace on the back, it'll be a 5.56. And then, so what we'll do on something like this is they wanted a burnt bronze lower, and then it's going to be a dark brown upper. So one of sort of our other big things that we do is we do a lot of coding. We're going to, I, I think as of April, we'll be the certified, Austin's only certified Cerakote provider. Very cool. Yeah, so um, a lot of Cerakote work, a lot of custom build work, and then a lot of people coming in just for parts and saying, hey, I'm doing my own build, can you get me this, this, and this? So people will, like a lot of people will come in and say, hey, I have a, if we don't have it in stock, we can get it in two days. Sure. So. so talk to us a little bit about Cerakote. Obviously, it's it's hit the gun industry like wildfire and it's just taken off, but there are still some people that don't really know too much about Cerakote and what makes it different than just your run-of-the-mill paint. Obviously, people have been customizing their rifles for forever with just a rattle can and just spraying it themselves, and, and that lasts for a little bit. But what is Cerakote and what makes that special? Well, I'm a huge fan of the rattle can. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the lone survivor look. Uh, but what's, what, what sort of separates Cerakote is it's a ceramic based coating and there's a couple different types but the type that we use is heat cured. So we spray it on, it goes into an oven, it bakes for a period of about two hours and then after that time there's sort of a curing period and then it's, it's, it's on there. Um, Cerakote, like on their website, which is probably the best place to get all the information because they have an uh, sort of just an informational area that lists all the benefits and advantages, which is probably way too long to go into here. Sure. But the main thing is, is it's a sort of rust preventative, it's a, a protective coating that's a step above parkerizing and a step above just the basic coating that you're Sure, on. sure. Um, and, and the difference between like a, you know, I think one of your questions you asked earlier, the difference between Duracoat and Cerakote is this is a heat, you know, Duracoat is you just spray on, you dry, and sure. it's done. Okay. With Cerakote, it has to be heat cured um, for the particular model. There is a, a non-heat cured option. The one we use is the heat cured, and that is really sort of what sets it and bakes the finish off. Yeah. And I mean, obviously the big appeal to Cerakote is that there is a almost endless list of color choices. I mean, it, I've gone on and tried to figure out I have a perfect AR-15 build narrowed down, and I thought everything was in line, and then I go to Cerakote, and trying to pick out a color is like just a whole different step. But I mean, we see here one of the uh, the guns that you've done, we've got a Springfield XDM in front of us, and this is a customer's gun, correct? Yeah, customer's gun, they came in, she had a picture of kind of what she wanted that she had seen somewhere, um, and 
you know, she said, this is what I want. The picture was pretty detailed, so she wanted everything. And the only thing that we didn't do in this case, sort of, that she wanted was uh, we did everything except for the pins. And on the pins, you know, my only thinking on that was if we did paint them, it was gonna, when you push the pins in, you're, it's gonna end up scratching them, even if you use a rubber punch. So we just decided that, you know what, it's gonna look better if it's like this. So this is kind of, and, and she's happy with it, so, you know, everyone goes home winning. Yeah. But, uh, you know, on something like this, what people have to understand is there's a, we charge a disassembly fee and a reassembly fee because mm -hmm. when we do something like this, the gun has to completely come apart. Sure. You can't just take the slide off, field strip it, and say, I want to paint it. You have to completely disassemble it. Well, that's good, too, because, I mean, you, you may have a surface, you know, you may be protecting the surface with a rattle can, but the... The problem is you're not getting into the nooks and right. crannies. You're not really protecting it. It's not acting as a rust preventative. And and so that's the good thing. And, and this is definitely an interesting build. I mean, something out of purple rain almost, but you know, everyone has their preference and, and you can't hate it. And it's a great gun and uh, looks really good. Came out really good. And so the Cerakote, the custom builds you've done, and um, obviously you guys are a gun shop and you do sell some pretty cool items. And then also you're an NFA dealer. So what that means is what to the average person? Well, it means we sell class three NFA items like suppressors, uh, some people call suppressors, some silencers, mm -hmm. whatever your choice. Um, but then we also sell SBRs. We build SBRs for people and then we sell machine guns. Yeah, so an SBR for someone that doesn't know is a short barrel short, rifle. Short barrel rifle. Okay, and we've actually got one in front of us, correct? Um, this could, this is actually, uh, you know, this is just an upper, so this could actually be used in a pistol build, Sure. it wouldn't be designated as an SBR. Sure. If you used it in a rifle build and had the stock on it, that's, this would be an SBR and you'd need a tax stamp. Of course. Um, each tax stamp, each SBR, or each NFA item uh, that we, sell a customer has to have a tax stamp, the tax stamp's $200. Sure. So, you know, whenever part of being a class three NFA dealer is there's a lot of education that goes in where people come in and a lot of people don't even realize that they can buy the item. Um, you know, they, they, they see suppressors and they say, oh, I guess that's for law enforcement. And we have to explain, no, if you have a trust or you have an LLC, we can walk you through the whole process, you know, from selecting it to to help, even helping with the paperwork. Sure, sure. And then on top of that, on top of everything else that you've mentioned, one of the things we were talking about before is that you, you kind of specialize in finding more difficult, hard to find items. And obviously um, it would be kind of weird if we did discuss this monster right in front of us. And I think now it's pretty quintessential. Everyone pretty know, pretty much knows what that is, Barrett 50 Cal. But you were actually saying there's something special about this guy, right? Uh, well, this is actually, a, I think, from 1996 is when. Um, this is a personal gun that I bought um, that uh, is actually up for sale. I, most of my personal guns are for sale um, because I kind of get them, and then if I use them for a while or get bored with them, I'll want to build something else, and I'll say, okay, I'm time to move on. Sure. But, yeah, I mean, this is, a, I actually bought this gun, and I bought another 50 cal, and this gun has actually never been fired, whereas I used the other one. Yeah. This one's never been fired. So we're gonna turn, we're gonna sell this one. And, and the other thing that we do, kind of you mentioned it, is we try to find things like we didn't, when we, when we were sort of envisioning what we wanted to be, we didn't just want to be a gun store. Sure. You know, I mean, because we are a gun store, we build guns, obviously, but we wanted to like, we didn't, we wanted to get stuff that either we thought was incredibly cool that we liked or help people find hard to find things. Sure. Or stuff sure. that you wouldn't see every day. Sure. Because I know my personal taste, I would go into a gun store and I would read about something in a magazine, I'd be like, oh this is the you know, this this is this rare, hard to find thing. Right. And then you go out on sort of like a, a quest to try and find it and it's either something you have to custom order or you know and most people when they want to buy a gun they want to hold it. They want to touch it and go like, oh okay, yes. Of course. I, this I like this. Yeah. You know? Um so we want it to kind of be the place where people could go, oh it, either he'll have it or he can get it. Yeah, you know. I mean, shopping online is cool. There's no, there's no shortage of online, um, you know, gun stores. But uh, you know, like you said, you, just to go in and be able to handle it, see how it fits in your hand. Um, and, and I would think that most people nowadays, even before they go and order something online, they're going into a gun store anyway and handling it. So I mean, you're pretty much a private investigator of the gun industry. You're gonna be able to find that that hard to find gun. I mean, just recently I did a rifle purchase, and 
Yeah, it took me forever to find it. I went to a few different states even to find it on a, on a road trip. Could not find the gun. And uh, so that's that's kind of one of the things that you've done. And the first thing that I noticed when I came in here the other day was uh, this thing. It really stuck out uh, to me. And um, and now this is something I definitely want to talk about, the, which is the ARAK-21. Yeah, it's a fax and firearms. And I actually discovered these guys last year at SHOT Show. Um, SHOT Show is an industry trade show that they have every year in January in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And it's only for FFLs um, or people in the gun industry. Um, and it's kind of where they launch the latest and greatest. Sure. Um, and I, you know, when, I think this was the last day of the show and we were sort of gunned out, you know, just if I saw another gun, it wasn't going to impress me. Yeah. And as we were sort of, you know, my wife was like, we, we have to see all, cover all the, you know, every, we can't miss one booth. And these guys were one of the last booths we came across. And I was just really impressed with the build quality and um, just a lot of their ideas. I mean, this is basically an AK-47 style upper. So the buffer tube is actually incorporated into um, the upper. And so you can, the, the benefit of that is, you know, you can put this on a standard 5.56 lower, sure. but you could have, like right now, this has a UBR stock on it. We could put folding stock on this. You, if you wanted to build this into a pistol build, you could put a pistol build, you know, I mean a pistol tube on the sure. back of it. Sure. So it gives you a lot of different configure options. The other nice thing I like about this, this is, that is different from a lot of your other uppers that you order is when you order this or when we order this for somebody because we're a fax and firearms dealer, mm -hmm. Um, it comes in a configuration where you get this and you get this what's called medium duty barrel but then it also comes with this heavy duty barrel and let me grab this little guy um, what's cool about this is when you want to switch this out say you want to switch barrels um, and this is a 223556 to switch it out you just undo you basically unzip one two three four five six pop off this plate that comes out this goes in six screws back and you have a different barrel. Very cool. Yeah, so it kind of gives you, you have two guns in one. And that's, I think that's really popular. People like, a lot of, there's like, you know, when you look at MRADs or some of these other guns like uh, Desert Technologies, sure. people are really into multi-barrel where you have buy one platform and you can change it out and have different guns. Variety is the spice of life. And now for those that don't know, um, the Surcoat is a service that you guys provide locally. Obviously, if you're in Texas, you can stop by the shop and you can do that for them in a few days or what's your typical term? Well, it's usually, turnout, we tell people that like if, when it's slow, it's one to two weeks. Sure. If they bring us it disassembled, it's obviously faster Okay. because part of the process that takes a while is taking it apart, putting it back together. If, it's, if something's brought to us in one piece, we function test it so that when we put it back together, we function test it again. Of course. Um, if it's brought to us in a box, we usually return it in a box. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, you know, part of it's a disassembly reassembly fee. So there's there's really no savings if you bring it to us in pieces and we reassemble it. Right. It's going to be the same price. And then for those that aren't local, um, is that something that they can mail into you and get done? Yeah, correct. Well? There's two ways to do it. If it's they're just mailing in, say, an upper or a handguard or any non-serialized part, they can just mail it to us. Okay. If it's a serialized part like a lower or a handgun and they're in another state and they say, hey, I really want Black Sheep Barnes to do it, sure. just take it to an FFL, uh, any FFL, and that person, that FFL knows how to mail it to us. We would provide them our, our paperwork. They would two-day mail it to us. We would do the work. We would mail it back to them and then they would give it back. And we do that all, we, we, do, we work like that all the time. Okay. And they can find all your contact information on your website, which was www.blacksheeparms.com and on the home page we also have our Cerakote pricing and sort of the whole process that we go through. Great. Well, thanks for meeting with us, Patrick. We'll definitely be back to talk to you some, sometime uh, again. All right, thank you. Have a good one.